What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews, exclusively here as always on the Costa D18 Studios channel. I, of course, am your host, the Renegade JJ Williams, and today's film from the Tom Hanks collection is the first in the Robert Langdon series, 2006's The Da Vinci Code, starring Tom Hanks, Audrey Tautu, Ian McKellen, Alfred Molina, and Paul Bettany. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me here once again for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews. And like I said during the introduction, today's film, The Da Vinci Code, is the first one in the Robert Langdon series. Tom Hanks playing Professor Robert Langdon will have Angels and Demons, as well as Inferno, a little bit later on this month. But as far as the Da Vinci Code goes, as our movie opens, Jacques Seigneur, who's a Louvre curator, is being pursued through the Grand Gallery by an albino Catholic monk named Silas, who demands to know the location of the Priory's keystone in order to find and destroy the Holy Grail. Sonier gives Silas a false lead and is murdered as a result. When the police find his body posed like da Vinci's Vitruvian man, police captain Bizu Fashi and his lieutenant Jerome Collette summon American symbologist Robert Langdon, who is in Paris, France, for a lecture on the interpretation of symbols for him to come down and examine Sonier's body. Langdon is shown the body and discovers a secret message which is only readable by blacklight. It contains an out of order Fibonacci sequence. We then meet Sophie Navu, a police cryptographer and Sonier's granddaughter, who tells Langdon that Fachi planted a tracker on him after finding the words P.S. Find Robert Langdon at the end of Sonier's message. Sophie throws away the tracker, which distracts the police while they sneak around the Lavour, finding more clues in Leonardo da Vinci's works. Langdon deduces that Sonier was the Grand Master of the Priory of Sion. And Silas works for an anonymous person referred to as the teacher, along with members of the Opus Dei, led by Bishop Arangrosa. Langdon and Sophie travel to the depository bank of Zurich and access Sonier's safe deposit box by using the Fibonacci sequence. Inside, is a cryptex, a cylinder container that contains a message on papyrus. The cryptex can only be opened without destroying the contents by turning the dials to spell a code word. As the police arrive, bank manager Andre Vernet helps Langdon and Sophie escape, then attempts to steal the cryptex and murder them. But Langdon and Sophie are able to escape with the cryptex. They go and they visit Langdon's friend, Sir Lee Teabing, who is a Holy Grail expert. Teabing claims that the Grail is not a cup, but instead is Mary Magdalene. Sir Lee tells them that Mary Magdalene was not a prostitute as commonly thought but instead was the wife of Jesus Christ. Sir Lee tells them that Mary Magdalene was pregnant during the crucifixion and that the priory was formed in order to protect the descendants of Jesus and Mary Magdalene. The Opus Dei have been trying to destroy the grail in order to preserve the credibility of the Vatican. Later, 
Silas breaks into Sir Lee's house, but T-Bean, who uses crutches, is able to use one to disable him. The group escapes to London via Sir Lee's private plane, along with his butler, Remy Jean. Their interpretation of a clue hidden in the cryptex box leads them to the temple church where they find nothing. Remy, who claims to be the teacher, frees Silas, takes Sir Lee hostage, dumping him into the car trunk, and takes Silas to hide out in an Opus Dei safe house. Sir Lee is then revealed to be, in fact, the teacher, and later poisons Remy before sending the police after Silas. The police shoot Silas after he accidentally wounds Bishop Aaron Grossa, who is promptly arrested by Fachi, who resents being used to hunt down Langdon. Sir Lee wants to bring down the church for centuries of persecution and defeat, and he confronts Langdon and Sophie. Now, understanding the true meaning behind the clue to unlock the cryptex, the trio goes to Westminster Abbey to the tomb of Sir Isaac Newton, who was a former Grand Master of the Priory. Sir Lee demands that the pair open the cryptex, and Langton tries and seemingly fails before tossing the cryptex into the air. Sir Lee dives for it, catches it, but the vial breaks and the papyrus is thought to be destroyed. The police arrive to arrest Sir Lee, who realizes that Langdon must have solved the cryptex's code and removed the papyrus before throwing it. The code is revealed to be the word apple, after the apocryphal myth of the apple which led Newton to discover his law of universal gravitation. The clue inside the cryptex tells of the grail hiding neath the rose, which leads Langdon and Sophie to the Rosalind Chapel in Scotland. Inside the chapel, they discover a secret room where it is obvious that Mary Magdalene's tomb had been housed, but it has since been removed. Langdon, after searching through the documents, realizes that Sophie's family died in a car crash, that Sonier was not her grandfather, but her protector, and that she is in fact the last descendant of Jesus Christ himself. The two are then greeted by several members of the Priory, including Sophie's grandmother, who promises to protect her. At that point, Langdon and Sophie part ways, with Langdon returning to Paris, where our adventure first began. While shaving, Langdon cuts himself, and he has an epiphany when his blood curves down the sink reminding him of the rose line. Realizing the true meaning of the cryptex clue, he follows the line to the levier and concludes that the Holy Grail is hidden below the pyramid in Versi. Langdon kneels atop of it and the camera takes us through the building into a secret underground chamber where the sarcophagus of Mary Magdalene is revealed. Now, as you may remember when we discussed dogma back in August, I'm not a hugely religious man. So I don't get into all this um, religious symbolism and stuff that, that's not normally my cup of tea. That being said, though, I'm very much into films like National Treasure, which are all about 
scavenger hunts and figuring clues out that lead you to the next place to get the big reveal at the end. And that's very much what this movie was. Trying to solve the clues to uncover the Holy Grail, Mary Magdalene. If Mary Magdalene was in fact the Holy Grail to begin with and not a chalice like we've been led to believe in other films. But be that as it may, regardless of what you may or may not believe the Holy Grail to be, this was a fun adventure, scavenger hunt, action, thriller type of film. Tom Hanks, as always, knocks it out of the park. This was the second time that I've seen it. I thoroughly enjoyed it every time. My only real complaint about this film is like I've complained about some other films in the past. I feel like this film is very long. The regular version clocks in at about two and a half hours, and I even went ahead and one-upped it and watched the extended version for this review so that I could see everything that probably had been cut the last time I saw it. Because the last time I saw it, I only had the standard theatrical release on DVD. At this point, I have a DVD and Blu-ray, and the Blu-ray has an extended version. So I went ahead and watched that one, which added almost 30 more minutes to the film. And if at two and a half hours I already felt like this was long, pushing three, way too long. There's a lot of stuff that could have been trimmed, make this a two-hour film, and I feel like it would have flowed a lot better. When it comes to my rating of this film, again, I love these type of films, these scavenger hunt type of films. So I've got no problem giving this four out of five stars. Everything about it was good except the length. So I feel that's a fair assessment and ranking for it as a result of it being too long. If this was about a two hour film, this very easily could be a five star film for me. I'm curious to know what you guys out there think, though. Those of you that have seen The Da Vinci Code. Did you even watch The Da Vinci Code? Or did you feel that this film was a little bit too sacrilege? You know? Is the film too controversial for you? Or are you able to put the religious part of it to the side and just go into it and enjoy a cool scavenger hunt, action thriller style movie? Let me know. If you're watching the premiere, leave your thoughts and comments over here. If you're watching on demand later in the day, leave your thoughts and comments down here. Whatever you do, though, when you get out there on the social media, let's try to get those hashtags trending. Hashtag Casa D18 Studios. Hashtag Renegades Reviews. Hashtag Renegade Returns. And, of course, the ever popular hashtag Shenanigans. We interrupt this episode of Renegades Reviews for an important announcement about... Merchandising. Merchandising? What's that? Merchandising. Come, I'll show you. Merchandising, merchandising, where the real money's made. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network for all the t-shirts you see here from the West Coast professor Jeff Meacham himself. You can get shirts for the Jeff Meacham Network, Talk Wrestling, as well as the red and gold Meachamania shirts. And while you're there, don't forget to get your shirts of the Casa D18 Studios Brotherhood, the Dads on Wrestling shirt, the Renegade J.J. Williams, Stat Boy Sports Bar, and the hashtag Stat Boy Approved shirt. Make sure you go over to teespring.com slash stores slash Jeff Meacham Network and score your shirts today. Make sure you guys tune in tomorrow, right back here on the Casa D18 Studios channel for another brand new installment of Renegades Reviews when we take a look at 2007's Charlie Wilson's War, starring Tom Hanks, Julia Roberts, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Amy Adams, Ned Beatty, Emily Blunt, John Slattery, and others. You're not going to want to miss out on that one tomorrow, right back here 
on the Casa D18 Studios channel. Right back here on an all new Renegades Reviews when we take a look at Charlie Wilson's War. To all my loyal fans and viewers out there tuning in for the premiere, leaving your thoughts and comments over here, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Likewise, all my loyal fans and viewers out there tuning in a little bit later in the day, watching on demand, leaving your thoughts and comments down here. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate all my loyal fans and viewers out there. Tune in on a regular basis. Show me that love. Show me that support. Going back to the archives, digging up those old episodes, watching them, reliving them in an effect and an attempt to try and help me boost up my viewership hours so I can eventually get monetized, make some money on this endeavor. Thank you to each and every one of you who tuned in and joined me here today, and I will see you guys next time.